Hello and welcome to Disease of the Day for British Equestrians Equine Health Week. I'm James Crabtree and I'm going to talk about breeding diseases. Breeding activities generally involve bringing new horses into close contact, be that at a stud, breeding centre or veterinary clinic. Breeding brings mares and stallions into close, intimate contact and as such there are risks of disease transmission through nose-to-nose, close bodily contact and through natural mating itself, providing the opportunity for disease to be transmitted venereally. When we breed horses through artificial means, we may still have horses coming together, and there are still risks of venereal transmission through insemination with semen carrying disease. We must recognise that disease can be spread from mare to mare, mare to stallion, stallion to mare, and also from stallion to stallion. To reduce the risks of disease spread through breeding activities, it's routine to screen for key diseases in both mares and stallions at the beginning of the breeding season or immediately prior to entry to a breeding centre or stud. The core breeding diseases are contagious equine metritis, equine viral arteritis and equine infectious anemia. Contagious equine metritis is often abbreviated to CEM and in the UK it's used to describe a group of three pathogenic venereal bacteria, those being Taylorella equigenitalis, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Klebsiella pneumoniae, all of which can cause uterine infection with lowered conception rates and as a consequence infected mares and stallions can become carriers. Starting with Taylorella equigenitalis, this is a notifiable disease and internationally recognised as the contagious equine metritis organism. Notifiable means that it is regulated by law and when it's found or suspected, it needs to be reported to the Animal and Plant Health Agency. If infection is confirmed, a beaver-approved veterinary surgeon will follow up to assist with the treatment and management of the case. The infection is transmissible by direct genital contact and via fresh, chilled and frozen semen. Taylorella is fortunately only identified sporadically in the UK, but it nevertheless remains very important. An outbreak in the USA demonstrated that it can be transmitted from stallion to stallion via semen collection practices. So collection centres require screening prior to semen collection. Ensuring stallions are free from Taylorella means that their semen will also be free from the pathogen. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is found not only in animals and humans, but in the environment, in soil and in water. There are many different types or strains of Pseudomonas and not all appear to be pathogenic and sexually transmitted. Unfortunately, we're not able to tell the difference between the strains and so we have to consider that all positive results are potential pathogens. Because Pseudomonas species are so ubiquitous, positive results occur relatively often. Klebsiella pneumoniae is another bacteria which some types are known to be pathogenic and some are not. These are identified by their capsule type, and capsule types 1, 2 and 5 may be sexually transmitted in horses, and so when Klebsiella is found, additional test always needs to be performed to determine if the bacteria identified is of the pathogenic type. So, one can get a positive growth of Klebsiella, but if it's not a capsule type 1, 2 or 5, then the swab might be acceptable even though the growth is not negative. However, if we find that a Klebsiella pneumoniae is capsule type 1, 2 or 5, the bacteria will need to be eradicated in a similar way to that of Taylorella or Pseudomonas. Screening for these bacteria is performed by swabbing of the clitoral fossa and sinuses in mares and swabbing of the stallion's urethra and penis for culture or detection of bacterial DNA using a PCR test. These bacteria may be living asymptomatically on the external genitalia and potentially also within the horse's internal reproductive tract. Treatment is not a simple matter of giving a course of antibiotics. An eradication of the bacteria, normalisation of genital health and establishment of disease freedom can take several weeks and sometimes months which can prove a costly exercise. All of this guidance is written down in the HBLB Codes of Practice. Disease freedom is certified so that all parties know that it's safe to proceed with breeding. Next to consider is equine viral arteritis, otherwise known as EVA. This is an, another notifiable disease, this time a viral infection, 
that has both respiratory and venereal transmission routes. It is notable that EVA can cause abortion and if a stallion is infected, it can subsequently become a carrier and shed the virus in its semen. EVA was last detected in stallions in the UK in 2020 and 2021 and as part of the legal controls in place for this disease, it may be necessary to castrate infected stallions. This is because castration results in a drop in testosterone and a subsequent spontaneous eradication of the virus. It's not currently possible to reliably rid a stallion of the carrier state whilst keeping them entire. But of course, castration means that we can't use them as a breeding stallion anymore. Vaccination of stallions may be utilised to prevent infection and reduce the risk of them becoming carriers. And screening is performed by looking for antibodies against EVA in the blood. So we call this serological screening with a positive result indicating either vaccination or previous exposure to the disease. Finally, we have equine infectious anemia, which we refer to as EIA, which is another notifiable viral infection. This infection is traditionally considered a vector-borne disease transmitted via infected blood and biting insects. It's not generally considered a venereal pathogen. However, the virus can be detected in semen and could potentially be spread through breeding. Nevertheless, it's, it's highly significant as infected horses are lifelong carriers and represent an ongoing risk to other horses. And as such, infected horses are humanely destroyed under the current law. Therefore, prevention is essential as there is no cure. EIA was last detected in the UK in 2012 and like EVA, we use a serological screening to demonstrate disease freedom prior to breeding. Breeding facilities may also have screening policies in place for other contagious respiratory diseases such as Streptococcus equiequi, the strangles bacteria, and equine herpes viruses 1 and 4, which in addition to causing respiratory disease can also cause abortion. EHV3 is a contagious venereal disease characterised by the formation of vesicles, pustules and ulcers on the external genitals of both mares and stallions, and thus is spread by direct contact. It's generally a self-limiting condition which there is no reliable screening strategy for. So mares or stallions with signs of infection are not used for breeding until the disease has run its course and they are no longer infectious to other horses. Despite some screening options for herpes viruses such as serological screening or detection of virus on nasopharyngeal swabs, it's not possible to detect potential carriers of herpes. And given the risks associated with herpes recrudescence and the potential to cause viral abortion, the majority of breeding mares will be vaccinated against EHV 1 and 4 as an aid to prevention of abortion. We must also remember that EVA can cause abortion and although we don't vaccinate mares for this, it does remain an important consideration when dealing with an abortion case.